because it's good for us to be in a mode where we can just give God praise. You know, I was thinking this morning, literally say thinking, um, just how the Lord is yet blessing us in spite of what we're seeing, in spite of what we think and or feel, God is yet blessing. Then I heard the Spirit of the Lord say uh, this morning, uh, speaking again about the spirit of increase. And I questioned, I don't know about you, but I questioned um, when I hear increase at a time when it looks like things are decreasing. When it looks like God is speaking prosperity in the midst of a place where it really looks like we're in poverty. Well, it looks like there's lack, but God still says there's plenty. Well, in the midst of all that, I, I'm in this mindset that I have to go with the Lord is saying. And if God says increase, that he's saying he's increasing his people or causing increase to come in spite of what's going for, then we've got to hear God. Now, listen, I was thinking that I want to share with you just for, for a little bit that um, the church uh, in the sense of seeing God in the past, and if God's the word of God says that he's the same yesterday, today, and forever, what we saw in the past or in the history in terms of the church, if God was moving there, if he was moving in his people, if he was moving in the midst of things then, is not he the same God presently that was in the past? <laughs> so I wanted to show you some things, that, uh, not show it to you, but just let's look at it again, if you will. And so in the book of Acts chapter 12, uh, interestingly enough, I just want to highlight a few things uh, in the book of Acts, uh, Acts chapter 12. Well, actually, let's back up to Acts chapter 11. And let's go to verse 28. Uh, there was a fellow by the name of Agabus. He stood up and prophesied through the Holy Spirit that a great and severe famine would come upon the whole world. And then it, it, the Bible tells you that it did occur. Now, now, the reason I bring that into mind is because here was something where God was speaking that the whole world was going to be affected. They were going to be affected by a famine that came upon the land. And so, and so it did. And so we're in, a, in, a, in another simpler time. Uh, we're seeing a pandemic that's affecting the whole world. Uh, God has spoken. If you go back, you're going to find there were words that, were, that God had already given to prophesy of the time that we're experiencing now. And so even as he did then, he is still yet moving. I want to continue on because uh, I want to get to a place um, that, that was happening at that particular time that deals with Peter. And uh, in chapter 12, about that time, Herod, the king, stretched forth his hands to afflict and oppress and torment some who belonged to the church or the assembly of God. And he killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. And when he saw that it was pleasing to the Jews, he proceeded further and arrested Peter also. This was during the time, the days of unleavened bread or the Passover week. And so he was looking at a sense of what he was going to do and, and how the people were, if you will, were uh, deciding uh, they, they liked what had happened uh, already and they wanted to get rid of uh, another brother. And so what they were looking for for Peter was the same thing that uh, where they had killed James, the brother of John. And so they were looking to behead Peter as well. And so when he had seized Peter, he put him in prison and delivered him to four squads of soldiers, four each to guard him, purposing after the Passover to bring him forth to the people. So Peter was kept in prison. But the Bible says, but fervent prayer for him was persistently made to God by the church. And you know, look, Peter was in this place. They seized him and they, they, they not just imprisoned him, but they wanted to make sure that he wasn't going to get away. They wanted to make sure that the people couldn't come in and take him out. And so they went to extra lengths to ensure, to ensure that he was guarded, to keep him in a place where no one could get to him. And the Bible says that Peter was kept in prison, but fervent prayer for him was persistently made. 
And now, and I want to I want to look at this, pause at this, because it was prayer that was going forth on a continual basis for Peter. They were praying for Peter's release. They were praying that God would move. So Peter was kept in prison again, but fevered prayer for him was persistently made to God. The very night before Herod was about to bring him forth, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers, fastened with two chains, and sentries before the door were guarding the prison. So look at this. They had him in chains, two guards around him, two more outside the gates. They want to make sure Peter didn't go anywhere. Amen. They want to make sure nobody got into him. But the Bible says, and suddenly an angel of the Lord appeared standing beside him and a light shone in the place where he was. And the angel gently smote Peter on the side and awakened him saying, get up quickly. And the chains fell off his hands. <laughs> and the angel said to him, tighten your belt, bind on your saddles. And he did so. And he said to him, Wrap your outer garment around you and follow me. That word where he says, wrap up your outer garment, it's like gird up, you know. And I, I like to tell people because that gird up, you know, we kind of would understand it. You know, they had to take that, that garment and take and tie it a certain way whenever they were going to go into battle. And, and we kind of use that same, same kind of word today, but we would use a word such as man up. Put your big girl undies on. And so we're in a place today that I want to tell some folks, we need to man up. We need to gird ourselves up. And so he tells Peter to gird up. And Peter went out following him, and he was not conscious. Peter didn't even believe this was really happening. Peter didn't think this was really happening. Peter thought he was dreaming. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I dare say that in the midst of some things that are happening, it's hard for some of us to really believe that this is really happening in the world right now. It's hard for some people to really believe this is what's going on. But I want to tell you, it's really happening. But just like with Peter, Peter's following this angel. And the angel brings him to a place. And he was not conscious what was apparently, what apparently being done by the angel was real. But thought he was seeing a vision. When they had passed through the first guard and the second, they came to the iron gate, which leads into the city of his own accord. Of its own accord, the gate just swung open. Man, what I want to get to, man, do we still believe in the miraculous power of God? Amen. Do we still believe today that what God did then, he can do today? So here it was, Peter's being led out. Something miraculous is taking place. The gates open up. He passed through on one street and, and at once, then the angel just left him. Man, you know, I can only imagine what would have been going through the mind of Peter after being incarcerated, but now suddenly got, you know, you know these two guides on either side, there's sentries that are posted outside the gate. You're inside, you're inside the prison in, how you say, in the dungeon, in the lower parts, you're down in the lower parts. So you still try to get up and the angels leading him through. Man, chains falling off. Do you know this is awesome? Man, does anybody believe that God can still unlock the chains in the midst of things that are happening now? Does anybody still believe that God can cause an angel to move on your behalf? Do you believe that there are ministering angels that have been sent? I just wonder, do we still believe in miracles today? The church has got to rise up. We got to rise up in Christ. But let's get back to Peter. So then Peter, the Bible says that Peter came to himself and said, now I really know. And I'm sure that the Lord has sent an angel and delivered me from the hand of Herod and from all the Jewish people that were expecting what they were expecting to do to me. Now, now can I tell you the world even now has an idea what's going on and what they're going to do and how they're going to do it. But I tell you, God has, I say this, God has a plan that's bigger than the plan of the enemy. That's bigger than the plan of the earth or the, the world. 
And we've got to come into a place where we align ourselves with what God's plans are. God, I, I, I just believe that, that just like God moved for Peter, he wants to move for some of us. Yeah. I just want you to know that some of us are in the place, if you want to call it, we're in the lower parts of the prison. We're in a place where we're bound up. Some of you have visions or desires to do certain things, but you feel like everything's bottled up, tied up. There's no way it can happen. I want you to know that in spite of what it looks like, God is able to move and cause your shackles to fall off. Amen. Peter, and when he had a glance, became aware of this, seeing everything. And he went to the house of Mary, the mother of John, whose surname was Mark. And it was a large number of people that were assembled together and were praying. Wait a minute. Are we really praying and believing God for or expecting results? Well, what's the point of praying if I don't think anything's going to happen? And you imagine us coming together to pray for healing, to pray for deliverance, to pray for whatever it is that God would move, yet not believing it's going to happen. Or if it happens, <laughs> being in a place of amazement that it happened. That kind of suggests if we're amazed that it happened, that we didn't really believe was going to happen. When he knocked at the, at the gate of the porch, this woman, this sister, Rhoda, came to answer. And recognizing Peter's voice, in her joy or in excitement, she fell to open the door. She is so excited. We're praying. Can you imagine praying for something to happen, seeing the results? She knew they were going to kill Peter. They had him in prison. But yet she recognized that knock at the door was Peter. And so in the midst of even in prayer, she was excited. She goes running back to tell the others that are still in prayer. Now think about this. Are there some things we're praying for? Is there some things we believe in God for? Man, I want to tell you, we need to get excited even at this because if God could move then, he can move now. She's recognizing the voice of Peter. She goes, and I, I love this because I want you to see Peter knocking at the door. Come on, come on, folks. Some of us have been knocking, calling out to God. We've been looking for something to happen. While we're yet knocking, God is yet hearing your call. While you're yet crying out, God is yet <laughs> answering you. Amen. And so, so I want you to know, don't be discouraged don't be in that place where you want to give up because it looked like it's not happening. Just keep knocking. So here it is. She goes in and she runs in to the people that are praying. Man, can you imagine what it's like to be praying and while you're praying, your prayer is answered? We should have already gone from asking to praising or praising while we're asking. But that, that doesn't sound like what really happened. Their reply to her, let's just kind of put it in this way. They basically said to her, you've lost your mind. You, you, you're not hearing the right thing. You must be crazy. But she was persistent. And she was strong and confidently affirming that, that this is real. This is true. It really happened. Peter's at the door. Can you imagine what you're praying for? The Spirit, if the Spirit of the Lord ever spoken to you, that yet, even while you were asking, God said it's done. Amen. Have you heard the Spirit of the Lord while you're yet looking at the situation that God says something different in the midst? And I want to tell you, this morning, I simply heard the Lord says that he's causing his people to increase. Well, in the midst of what we're looking at, it would be easy to say, you're crazy. That's not God. It's got to be something else. But God is yet speaking while it yet looks like it's not happening, it has. While it looks like it still should ha be coming, God says it's here. We've got to understand this. <clears throat> we may have to change our position. We may have to change our stance. We have to move from where we're at and what we've been thinking into what God is saying. Well, they were telling her, you're losing it. Everything's not quite right. Can I say to you this morning when I heard the Lord saying about increase, he's causing his people to increase, to hold on, stand still, basically stand still. See the salvation of the Lord in spite of what it looks. 
and what it looks like, God is still causing his people to prosper. But you got to be listening. You know, it'd be easy to say that's not God. It would be easy to say that we need to repent. Yeah, I know we need to repent. It would be easy to say that God wants to punish us. Yeah, we may need to be punished, but God is still looking at things and saying some things that's quite different than what you and I are saying. Amen. It would be easy to dismiss it and say, man, this is crazy. But I believe some of us are praying. I believe that there are some ministries that are praying for a move of God. Amen. I believe Amen. there are some that are seeking the face of God. There are some that it felt like we've been tied up. We've been put in a place where we couldn't move. It looks like the enemies had us on every side. Look like he's had the doors blocked. But I want to tell you that in the midst, God says, I'm causing the chains to fall off. Amen. God says, I, I, in the midst of these things, God is getting ready to do something so miraculous. We are going to be in a place where it's like, God, is that really? Is that really? Yes, it's God. We will think that it's a vision because of the way God is moving. But yet I'm here to tell you, God wants us to move in this place. That even though it looks like it's not going to work for you, God says it's time. Amen. Look at verse 16. They said, in the, you know, in verse 15, they continued, they, they, even to the point they said, hey, that can't be Peter. Ah, that's probably just his angel. But look at what Peter's doing. Peter's persistence to get in to the people. He's still at the door knocking. But meanwhile, Peter continued knocking. And, and the reason I want to stop and pause there because Peter continued knocking. I want to tell you, some of you have been calling out to God, been looking for a move of God, been looking for revival, been looking for the spirit of God to move like never before. And I want to tell you, don't stop crying out to God. Amen. Don't stop Amen. because this is the season to see it come to fruition. Amen. Don't stop. Yet while everyone says, man, you know, you ever been in a place, you're just almost ready to give up because it looks like it's not happening, but God says it's so. Don't be weary in well-doing, for in due season you shall reap if you faint not. It's strong now. Peter's still knocking. It would have been easy to say, wait a minute, especially after being delivered from this place, it had been easy to go and hide it. That would have been the thing that most of us would have been doing. Let me get off because they're going to be looking for me. I don't want to get carried back. Paul, Peter keeps knocking. When they opened the gate and saw him, <laughs> this is what gets me. Why was the church in amazement? Why are we in awe in the sense of knowing that God can do bigger and better things than what, what we've ever seen? <clears throat> Man, we should be in anticipation of a move of God that's greater than anything that we could imagine. Let, let, let me say it like this. The Bible tells us, and I like to put it in this way, God says, expect, and I will exceed your expectations. So whatever I'm expecting, God wants to exceed. So if I'm looking for, what, let's call it a grand move, a great move. If I'm looking for God to move and expand in a way that I never thought could possible, God says, I'm going to exceed your expectations. Why should we be amazed when we pray? Why shouldn't we be praying for healings and deliverance? You know, there, there are people that are caught up in different places. And I want to tell you, you may have family members that need to be saved. There may be family members that are waiting to hear a word. And you're looking at them because of their condition. Maybe they're on drugs. Maybe they're in something that they shouldn't be in. And you're looking at them as a lost cause. But to Christ, not so. What's impossible with man is possible with God. Amen. I believe the church needs to be in a position of prayer. Our posture needs to change. Today, we need to get into a place where we're expecting a move of God. Amen. Amen. We need to get into a position now <clears throat> that what God did yesterday, he can do today. Man, I'm looking at something. And I, I, I want you to know that God wants more than what you and I have ever even had. Whatever we received, he wants more than what you've got. He wants to move you into a place that you've never been before. 
Somebody say I'm an anointed individual. God has anointed me. God has caused me to be used in a great manner. But I want to tell you, God wants to use you even more. Ah, glory to God. He wants to take you to a place that you've never been. He wants to do something in you that others may see the glory of God revealed in you because you're a willing vessel of the most high. Tell somebody, keep knocking. Don't give up. We don't want to be a church that's just amazed because God did something. We want to be in a church that's praising because God is doing something. Amen. We want to be in a place that we're praising because we know that God is able. Man, what what you mean? God is able. What do you mean? God is able. I don't care what your situation is. I don't care what you're experiencing now. God is able. Now listen, Amen. listen. Let me let me just say this. Let me just go off the beaten track just for a moment. I want to tell you I experienced a time in my life where God simply told me, stop looking at what you don't have and focus on what you do. Well, in other words, he was telling me, don't look at what you can't do, but look at what you can. Now, I was in a place at that point in time when he spoke that word to me. Physically, there were some things I was having real difficulty with. I want to tell you today that some of that still exists, but not like it was before. One of the things that God wanted me to do was stop focusing on what I was unable to do and focus on what I could. You know, some of us walk with a limp sometimes, or we don't walk as fast as we did. And we're, we're discouraged or disappointed because we're not moving like we once did. But let me tell you, instead of focusing on what the fact that you're not moving like you did, just focus on the fact that you're moving. Amen. One of the things we got to do is we got to come to this place. We're going to praise him no matter what. If I say this, if I look at it like this, it's like God wants you in a mode that you understand he's giving you hands. Well, take your hands and give him a wave. Give him a hand wave of praise. You've got your lips. You can open your mouth and give him praise. Glory to God. If you can stand, that means that you can give him a dance. Glory to God. We got to stop focusing on what we can't do and focus on what Amen. we can't. God Amen. wants to use you for his glory. He wants to take you to a whole nother dimension and realm in him. But glory to God. Let me say it in this fashion. It's just like the church. We've been standing and looking amazed or in awe. And that, that's a good thing to be in awe of God. But at the same time, <clears throat> not as though God can't do it, but we got to look as though, man, I'm excited because my God is moving. My God is able to do what none other can do. We ought to be praising God, looking forward to the doors opening and falling down. We want to see a church without walls. Amen. Want to see a church on the move? That means God is able to move in me. Glory to God. Take off the shackles, Father. Take off the things that have hindered me. Stop looking at other people as though they're stopping me from going forth. We got to believe that God is able like never before. If he could move for Peter and take him out of prison, deliver him from a place where he was incarcerated with everyone around him, God can move in whatever you're bound up in today. Amen. Can I say it like this? I'm telling you, we, we have some family members that need to be saved. We have some family members that need to hear a word, but they're only going to see Christ if you let the shackles fall off of you. Amen. Amen. Woo, help me, Holy Ghost. Amen. Help me, Holy Ghost. So Peter, I'm looking at Peter and I'm looking at the church. The church was in amazement. Why should they be amazed at a move of God. Weren't we, weren't we praying? Weren't we anticipating? Weren't we expecting? Glory to God. I want to tell you today, the church needs to be anticipating fire falling from heaven. The church needs to be anticipating a move of God. Maybe in this, what we call a pandemic, maybe there's going to be people that will come through the doors that have something that God will say, I'm going to give you the power to take it out. Help me, Holy Ghost. I'm going to give you the power, the anointing to heal. I'm telling you, there's a place that God's calling us to. We got to be willing to go. Amen. We can't walk in a place that we, we don't really believe. It's like God help us with our unbelief. Help me, Holy Ghost. Here's the church. Peter was knocking when they opened. And they saw him. They were amazed. Oh, think about this. Why would they be in a maze? Weren't they praying? Weren't they praying? Weren't they asking God to deliver him? 
Well, if I'm asking God to deliver me, why am I amazed? <laughs> you know, why, why is it such a big deal? Why is it different in that regard? If I say it like this, if I'm believing God to move, then, it, it, you know, the thing about it, can I say it like this? I'm not amazed when it happened. I'm already praising. I, I, I liken it in this fashion. I, I'm going to tell you, because I've been in a place, <clears throat> really been in this place. I just know God just wants us to praise him. Well, God, you ever been in a place you're going to praise God, but it's not for you? It's just not the time? It's just not the right? Everything's not right? And everything's not in its proper place? Yeah. Now, let me see it like this. God tells us to praise when we don't have a reason to praise. As far as we know, but the Holy Ghost, the Spirit on the inside, which knows what's going to happen. The Spirit wants to praise even though you don't want to. Some of us have been praising God. It's like, wow, I don't want to get excited. You've been in that place? Amen. Been excited, but you don't want to be excited because I don't really have anything to be excited about. And I got excited before, and I didn't see this happen. But God wants you excited about what he's doing now, that his glory. See, when God moves in your life, when you can't do it and God does what you can't do, you can't say what I did. Amen. But when I recognize it's God, and that's one of the things when Peter woke up, how you say when Peter, Peter said like this, at first he thought he was just dreaming. He thought he was just having a vision. But when Peter realized what would really happen, Peter said, I know this is God. <laughs> well, I want to tell you, God wants some of us in a position today where it's not where we can say what we did, but we'll see the glory of God being revealed in our lives and we'll know that it's him and not me. Whew. You talk about a testimony. Testimony changes when we can't talk about what I did, how I did in it, but the glory of God. Peter, Peter, when you look at this, Peter don't have a test. Peter doesn't have a testimony where he's saying, well, you know what he did, how he did this, but he, he has to testify about the goodness of God, how God sent an angel of the Lord that caused the shot. Peter can't say, I was able to take, pick the key and the key just caused a lot. He can't speak about what he did. He can only talk about God. God wants the victory or the glory in your life Amen. for the victory that he brings forth. I hope I'm talking to somebody this morning. And so then, so you look at this. I'm getting ready to close. I'm getting ready to close. I pray this is making sense to you. So then Peter he was trying to steal the people because they were, they were excited. And he began to share with them how the Lord had delivered him out of prison. He, he began to, to share with them how God had delivered him out of prison. I want to tell you, you get ready to share with somebody how God took you out or made a way for you to come out mm -hmm. of a place that you were in. God's getting ready to do something miraculous in your house. And he told him, he says, I want you to go back and tell this to James, the lesson to the brother. He, he says, I want you to go back and tell him what God has done. And I want to tell you, there's already, there's going to be a big stir that's going to happen because of what God is doing. I don't know if this is making sense to anybody, but I want to tell you, you know, we need to get to a place that it's like, hey, I, I, if I say it like this, where we're looking for God to do something that's bigger than what we could do. You ever got, like I asked before, do you have some family members? And you in, in in you know within that you know that are not saved that don't know Christ as their personal savior. Maybe they're they're angry at you because you're serving God and they don't feel like you got the right God, whatever it is. But I want to tell you, if we can just take and begin to pray for individuals, mm -hmm. begin to call that call it out in Jesus' name, those things that have been out of place. I, I want to say it like this. I I I believe that God is able to make a way. Now we use that terminology to make a way out of no way. And I, I, well, let's, let's say it like this. I believe if the way is locked or blocked, God is able to open a door that seemed like it's been closed. I'm believing right now that where you're at, tell somebody where I'm at <clears throat> is difficult. Where I'm at is really hard. Well, then you're, you're the person that I'm trying to speak to. You're the person I want you to know that just like God did back then, just like he moved for Peter, just like he moved and got Peter, he caused a way of escape for Peter. Amen. I'm telling you, God can make a way of escape for you. He can cause. Now, when we talk about the shackles for, for Peter, it was a sense of him being shackled to keep him in place. I want to tell you, spiritually, some of you have been shackled to keep you in place. 
The enemy's been causing your fears to keep you where you're at. He's been causing you because of your own sense of inabilities, your insecurities, to cause you to be shackled in the place that you are. And I'm here to tell you today, God wants to release you from your prison. He wants to deliver you from the place of bondage. I just need somebody that's willing to pray. I just believe that now is the time that God's going to cause an anointing. Somebody say an anointing. An anointing. To be upon his people like never before. I believe that God has already caused you to prosper like never before. I believe God's going to, whatever you've got spiritually that's good, God's going to cause it to be greater. He's going to cause increase to come in your relationships. He's going to cause increase to come in places that you never thought it could happen. Somebody say increase. increase. When it looks like it can't be, God wants greater. Can I use another word for you right now? Opportunity, and the other word would be challenge. What looks like, how you call it, a difficulty, a problem, is just simply an opportunity for God to move in your life. God wants to free you. He wants to cause the shackles. Your anger, he wants to take it away. Your frustration wants to take it away. God wants to cause all those things to be released in your life where the enemy's tried to bind you up. God wants to cause the angel of the Lord to come into your place and release you from the prison that you've been in. God wants to use you in such a miraculous manner that it's going to be a testimony and a witness for him. Glory to God. I believe this is a time, a season like never before, where the Spirit of the Lord said increase when it looks like it can't be. While you're still in that place, God says, I'm causing everything to fall off you. It's new. Is anybody ready for that? Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Father, I'm thanking you in advance for what you're going to do. I'm thanking you for the release, for the deliverance that comes through your word. I thank you for visitation in my place. I thank you for you moving mightily in my steed. I thank you, Father God, that a new anointing that's coming upon my life. I thank you that, that even in this hour that you're taking me to a new dimension, a new realm, a new level, or a new dimension or realm in prosperity. I thank you for those things. I thank you for revelation, knowledge, the wisdom to walk in these new places. I thank you, Lord, for souls that are coming to the kingdom now. Souls that are going to be delivered and set free for what you're causing to be. I thank you for a church that is in anticipation and expectation for a mighty move of glory. And Father, we thank you for it. We call it so. We believe it's done. And in Jesus' name, we stand in agreement that it is so. Thank you again. Father, we say thank you in Jesus' name. Now, I want to say this to you. I want to say this to you. The word works. If you will work the word. We now have three ways that you can give. You can go to our website at agapecommunityfellowship.com. Go to the bottom and click on the Givelify link. That's one way. Way number two is to give through Zelle. To give through Zelle, just go to your bank account. Click on the Zelle uh, icon. The email address for that is agape. I-N-T for U-S at yahoo.com. The third way to pay is go to the P.O. Box 1222, Pomona, California, 91767. Thank you.